Okay, in this section, we're going to talk about 11.7, which is introduction of the cylindrical and the spherical coordinates. Um, the cylindrical coordinates are very similar to um, polar coordinates. If you remember back when, when we were doing polar coordinates, it was just two-dimensional space, right? You would convert your X. Um, I think you did that in pre-cal. So in pre-cal, we converted our X and our Y coordinates into um, radius and, and, and angles, right? So you would use this formula for X, R cosine theta, and you would use this formula for Y, R sine of theta. Well, the only thing different for the cylindrical coordinates is that now you're in three-dimensional space, so now you have Z, okay? And Z is just gonna stay Z, that does not change. So essentially what you're doing for all of these conversions is you're just converting the X and Y coordinates and the Z coordinate will be the same, okay? This is for cylindrical coordinates. When we get to spherical coordinates, there's a lot more going on and you do need to convert that third um, um, that third coordinate, okay? So, excuse me. Um, let's go ahead and see what that first problem is going to look like. So number one says to convert this point from cylindrical coordinates to rectangular coordinates. So they have given me these coordinates. Now, in order for me to do that, I need to recognize which what each of these numbers represent. Okay, um, it's always going to be r first, then theta, then the z coordinate. Okay. So, so far, what I know is that R is equal to one and that theta is equal to zero radians, okay? I know it's not zero degrees because there's no degree symbol there. So it's gotta be zero radian. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this information to go figure out what the X and the Y coordinates should look like, okay? So the X coordinate should be R cosine of theta and the Y coordinate should be R sine of theta. Now these, the zeros are in radians. So if you're going to use your calculator, that's fine. Just make sure one, you're not using a graphing calculator, right? In my announcement, can't use graphing calculators. And two, make sure that you're in radian mode, okay? If you're in degree mode, you see DEG right here, you need to go to mode. And then this would be highlighted because you're currently in that. You would need to move over to the right to radian and hit enter so that radian could be highlighted. And then you can do second quit and to go back to your screen and it should change the degree to radian, okay? So I just wanted to bring that up. So I'm gonna type in one cosine of zero since I'm in radian mode and I get one, one sine of zero and I get zero. So I know the X coordinate is one, the Y coordinate is zero and we know that the Z coordinate stays Z. So this would be one, zero, negative one. It just so happens coincidentally that it's the same thing, okay? So when I come in here, I'm literally going to type one comma zero comma negative one, okay? And then let's move here to the second one. So now this one says, um, convert the point from cylindrical coordinates to rectangular coordinates. So it's the same thing, just I think they gave us this problem because um, we don't have the angle zero anymore, okay? So they wanted you to try one where the angle was not zero. Okay, so again, you have to remember that this is R, this is theta, and this is Z. So then that means that X would equal nine, cosine of this angle and y would equal nine sine of this angle. And so I'm gonna type that in my calculator, nine cosine of negative three pi over two and close it. And so then I get, coincidentally, I get zero for x and then nine sine of negative three pi over two out of there, close it, I get nine. So then that means that the coordinates here are gonna be zero for X, nine for Y, 
And then the Z coordinate is going to stay the exact same as it was. So Z will still be four, okay? So in here, I'm gonna do zero comma nine comma four. And we can check them as we go, just to make sure, right? Um, I think here, let me see, submit. I mean, we might as well, right? I don't think I did that on the last one, but it'll be all right. Okay, so this one was zero comma nine comma four. And let's verify that we do in fact get these correct. Okay, two checks, yay. Now let's work on this one. So number three says, let me click out of here because I can't see. It says convert the point from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates, okay? So in this case, you're given four square root of two, four negative four square root of two, comma six. And so if this is in rectangular coordinates, that means this is X, this is Y, and this is Z, okay? And how do you get R and theta whenever you give an X and Y, okay? R is found by doing the square root of X squared plus Y squared, and theta is found by doing 10 inverse of y over x, okay? And just making sure that your angle um, is between zero and two pi, or I'm sorry, is in this, this guy's domain. This guy's domain is from negative pi to pi, right? So that means that your angle should be in negative pi to pi, okay? Um, basically in quadrant one or quadrant two. Mm, positive x, negative y, and positive z. Okay, I'm thinking in uh, something else in a two dimensional space, but we're in three dimensional space. So let's go ahead and look at this. Um, dun dun dun. If I want to do r squared, that's going to be the square root of four square root of two squared plus negative four square root of two squared which I can type in my calculator and it should reduce it for me. Square root, parentheses, four, square root of two, get out of the house, close that and square it. Plus parentheses, negative four, square root of two, get out of the house, close the parentheses, square it. And it tells me it's just a nice eight. Well, that's nice. Sometimes it's not so pretty. And then for theta, I'm gonna do 10 inverse of y, which is this guy over x, which is this guy. So really I'm just doing 10 inverse of negative one. And in my calculator, 10 inverse of negative one, I am in radian mode, so it will tell me the answer in radians. Now, normally when you're doing these problems, it should be um, in terms of pi. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide by pi so I know that it's that number times pi. And if I don't know what that number is as a fraction, I'm gonna hit my double arrow right here. And so I get negative one fourth pi. Now let's just make sure. We wanna make sure that negative one fourth pi is equivalent to this number that they gave us. So negative one fourth pi. And let me hit the double arrow and I do get that same number that we got after we took the 10 inverse, okay? So this is just negative pi over four if you wanna write it a little bit simpler, okay? So then what are the coordinates? The coordinates are going to be r, which is eight, theta, which is negative pi over four, and then z, which is just gonna stay six, okay? So eight comma negative, I'm gonna type pi for pi, and then do four, go to the side, comma. Now let's check this one, moment of truth, right? Oh, we should get a or check, I'm sorry. Okay, yay, moving on. Mm, this one's the same thing, four. So we got nine, negative nine and two. 
So we know that R is going to be the square root of 9 squared plus negative 9 squared. Remember, this is x, y, and z. So we get the square root of what? I don't know if we get the square root. I'm going to erase this because I don't know what I get. Clear. Square, no. Square root of 9 squared plus negative 9 squared. And I get 9 square root of 2. Awesome. Now, theta is going to be 10 inverse of y over x, which is 10 inverse of negative 1. And we've already done 10 inverse of negative 1. And we got this. So what is my point going to look like? It's going to look like r, theta, and z, which is 2 in this problem. So 9 square root of 2. Oops, I have a 1 in the front. Get out of the house, put the comma. Negative pi over 4, go to the side, comma 2. Let's check that one, see if it likes it. It shouldn't matter the number of spaces and stuff that I put in there, but we'll see. I think I did not put any spaces, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it took it. Awesome. Okay, number five. Let's go for number five. So now we have z equals x squared plus y squared minus eight. Okay, and it says find an equation in cylindrical coordinates for the surface represented by the rectangular equation. Okay. So we need to use those same facts, right? Z is equal to Z, X is equal to this, Y is equal to that. But we also know um, that X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. So really I can just jump right to it and say that that's equal to R squared minus eight, okay? And there's no other X's and Y's in this equation anymore. So the equation is literally V equals R squared minus eight. And let's go double check that. Okay, and then we have y equals x squared, which they also want us to put in cylindrical coordinates. Now this one's not as easy as that. I don't have x squared and y squared. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert them individually and then see what I can do with that, okay? So I know that y is our sine theta and x is our cosine theta. So I get r sine theta equals r squared cosine squared theta. And then I'm gonna go where the um, r squared is. Now, if you factor this, you get zero equals r times r cosine squared theta minus sine theta, right? If I factor out an r. Now think about this. If you set this equal to zero and you set this equal to zero, which one of these is going to be your graph, okay? r equal to zero means the radius is zero, which means it doesn't matter what the angle and the z-coordinate are because the radius is zero, okay? So that means you're literally just talking about a point, okay? And if your radius is zero and you're talking about a point, it's definitely not the graph of a paraboloid, a parabola y equals x squared, right? So this one is definitely not our graph, okay? But this one could be. All you have to do is get r all alone. So if I move over, I'm going to write um, positive sine over here. Then I'm going to divide both sides by cosine squared. And then I notice that they switch the sides. And then they also do something like this. They write sine over cosine times 1 over cosine. This expression is equivalent to that one. 
So now we're getting back to all your trig manipulation from pre-cal, right? This is equivalent to this. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Sine times one is sine, okay? But when it's written like this, you can say that's tangent and that's secant. And so R equals tan theta secant theta. So I'm gonna type in here, R equals, I think we got the trig functions in here. Tan of um, dum, 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 symbol relations, Greek, here we go, theta. And then I'm gonna go to the side and I'm gonna go back to trig and I'm gonna hit secant, go back to Greek, type in another theta and get off to the side and then hit submit. And let's try that, see what it says. It should say yay, but let's <laughs> make sure and not assume that it will be good. Okay, yay, got the green check. Okay, awesome. So now we're gonna move on to seven. And I think I can fit seven in this small space I have left on my paper. So it has x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus two z. Now um, we're still doing cylindrical coordinates. So I just need to convert the x and y's to r's and thetas. And we already know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And so normally what we'll do is we'll um, isolate that um, r term, okay? And so then we'll get r squared equals, um, actually we, we don't need to, but we can. We can do 2z minus z squared. Um, but you can't take the square root of r squared, okay? If you do, you just have to make sure you put plus or minus, okay? So I wouldn't do that because then it's gonna separate your graph into one image and another image, which makes the whole image, right? So I'm just gonna put as r squared, even though ideally you want to solve for r all by itself, but in this case, I can't without taking the square root, okay? Um, 2z minus z squared. So let's see if it will accept that form. I'm hoping it does. Sometimes the computer is real picky about which way they want you to write the answer, and then sometimes it's not. Okay, it went with that. It did take it. It's not like this one where I could factor out an R, right, and then separate the two. When you can't, it's not something equal to zero. In this, I cannot factor that the way it is. I would have to like add terms and then do all kinds of weird stuff to it, um, which is not necessary. Okay, number eight. Let's keep going. Move this one to the back and then we can work on number eight. Where's the top of my paper here? Okay, number eight says R equal to four, okay? Now, because we don't have, um, remember this is cylindrical coordinates. So we know that the, um, if we change this to cylindrical coordinates, you're gonna end up with, um, if you square both sides of this equation, you're gonna end up with R squared equal to 16. And we know that X squared plus Y squared equals 16. And we know that this is the image of a circle, right? with um, radius equal to four, okay? Which makes sense because it says up there the radius equals four, right? But Z is not given. So Z can be, it's called arbitrary. Z can be anything, okay? Z is very much arbitrary. And because Z is arbitrary, what that means is that Z could be positive, Z could be negative, it could be anything. So our graph is really gonna look like a cylinder where you have this circle, but the z value could be a negative z value, could be a positive z value. All we know is that the radius of that circle is um, four, okay? So what is that going to look like? It should be, this one looks like it has a radius of two, so that's definitely not ours. Um, this one has a radius of four. And so this one will be our cylinder. 
Remember, in order for it to look like a sphere, it would have had to have had x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 16. So let's go verify that this one is correct. I don't think I was supposed to type anything in. If I did, I might have gotten an x. Oops. Yeah, I was supposed to type something in. So I got this part right, but I never did answer here. Okay, so we got... Um, it says find an equation in a rectangular coordinates. So we got x squared plus y squared equal to 16. Now let's check it again so we can get the other check mark. Okay, we got the other check mark. Okay, moving on. We have number nine, r squared plus z squared equal to six. So it wants me to find an equation in rectangular coordinates. So I do know that this guy is x squared plus y squared. I also have the z squared term and the six. Now this, because I have all three variables, is a sphere with radius equal to the square root of six, because the six is not a perfect square, right? And so I should have, what is the square root of six? It's like two point something, I think. It's about 2.4, okay? So I should have a sphere, which is only these two options, mm -hmm. but which one has a radius of 2.4? So it looks like one, two, and almost a half, right? And then one, two, wait a minute, one, two, and then almost a four. It does look like a sphere though. So I believe this one is it. It's just easier to tell on the X axis. Whereas this one, notice it only goes out one unit and that's it, not enough, right? It goes up one, two units and that's it. So it's not quite, this one's not quite big enough. It needs to be, this first option, this first sphere. And here, let me write x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to six. And now we'll check it. Um, and yes, it's not telling me that this one's correct. It's, that's just where the check is when you mark the graph correct. So it's not telling me that this one is the correct one. It's telling me my answer is correct, even though it's way up there. Okay, number 10. Now we finally get into those spherical coordinates, which are a bit more complicated, okay? So it's telling me to convert this point from rectangular to spherical. So that means if it's rectangular, this one's X, that one's Y, and the other one is Z, okay? But in order for me to change it into my um, formula over here, I am gonna need to know what my formulas are. So let's see. Um, I know that when we're converting, we're gonna need to find rho, theta, and um can't remember if it's psi or phi how you say this one um i think it's phi or psi i cannot remember um let me go google the greek letters just so that um, names of greek letters so that they'll have it spelled out for me um here we go, we need more letters than that, just not those. There it is, it's phi. Okay, cool. So it's phi, and we're using the lowercase one. Even for theta, we're using the lowercase and so forth. Um, okay, I got my answer, it's, it's phi. So we gotta find rho, theta, and phi. Now, I know that rho is a lot like r radius. So it's going to be the square root 
of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And theta is just like before. It's tan inverse of y over x. Um, and rho is going to be um, the cosine inverse of um, of theta over, oh gosh, I can't remember. Let me look it up real quick. I figured it out. It is z over rho, okay? Rho is what you call the one that looks like a p. So it's rho theta phi. Now, um, so there we go, we got it. I didn't wanna write out this whole thing. It's just over phi. I believe so. Let me go double check. I'm going to click on the lecture notes real quick. Yeah, it is V because it's the square root and everything. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so here we go. If we know X, Y, and Z, we can certainly find rho just by doing 8 squared plus 0 squared plus 0 squared, which will just be 8. Then I can figure out tan inverse of Y over X which is just tan inverse of zero. And let's see what tan inverse of zero is. It's just zero. And then for rho, we get cosine inverse of z, which is zero, and rho, which was eight. So really I'm just doing cosine inverse of zero, which is, my calculator tells me this, but if I divide by pi, it's half of pi, which is pi over two. Okay, now um, that's it. So then what does it look like, the answer? The answer should be, um, in order, it should be rho, theta, and then phi. So that means it's gonna be eight comma zero comma pi over two. So let's try it out and see if we get it correct. So eight comma zero comma pi over two. Now let's check. Okay, um, so yay, we got that one good. Now number 11, let's see, we have negative five, negative five, square root of 13. And so we have rho, this one is in rectangular, so that means this is x, y, and z. So let's see what we get for rho. We're gonna take the square root of negative five squared plus negative five squared plus square root of 13 squared. That means 25 plus 25 plus 13. So I get the square root of 63. I do not think that that is going to simple, or it will a little bit. It gives me three square root of seven. And then for theta, we're gonna do 10 inverse of um, y over x, which is 10 inverse of one. I get this number but I'm going to um, divide it by pi. So that's a fourth of a pi, so pi over four. And then for rho, we're gonna do cosine inverse of z with the square root of 13 over rho, which is three square root of seven. Um, I'm gonna simplify that first, although I don't need to, but I'm going to. just to see if it does simplify. And it doesn't look like it does. So cosine inverse of fraction square root of 13 over three square root of seven. And then I'm gonna divide that by pi and I'm gonna put that in a fraction and it doesn't look like it does go in a fraction. So unfortunately I have to keep it like this. It looks really ugly but it is going to have to stay looking like that. So that means that it should be rho 
theta and then phi just so that I, because I can't type in a weird decimal. I'm just going to type this in like this. And let's see if the web assign will accept that. Okay. So three square root of seven, get out of the house, comma, pi over four, uh, the fraction. And then we're going to do trig cosine inverse of a fraction. And we're going to type square root of 13 at the top and then three square root of seven at the bottom. Let's see what it says. I don't think I made an error, but let's see. Ah, see, no, it did not like that. So let me see where I made my mistake. Okay, I think the mistake happens to be here with theta. Okay, because our calculator will only tell us our angles between um, negative pi and pi. So if the answer is something greater than pi, if the angle is bigger than pi, then it won't um, show us that on the calculator. Okay, so what I've got to do is I've got to consider what quadrant this is in. So if you're looking at the x, y axes, um, what you're doing is you're going um, negative five in the x direction, negative five in the y direction, and then you're going up squared as a unit. So it puts me in this um, octet back here, okay? It's between these two and above the, y, the z axis, right? Um, that's where your point is. But when I follow this, if I go out um, a certain number of units, this many units, three square to seven units. And then I rotate, actually go out this way. And then I rotate in this direction, this many units, pi over four is only gonna get me about here. And then if I move um, according to this angle, whatever that angle is, it's gonna put me still in this first quadrant, okay? So somehow I've gotta keep going all the way over there. And so if you notice, it's a straight line as far as the angle is concerned. So for this angle, in order for me to get in that quadrant, I am gonna have to add pi to it. And so then that would give me five pi over four, which means my answer down here should have five pi over four. So let's go ahead and change that to five pi over four and see if it will accept um, my answer that way because I think that the pi over four is not putting us in the correct quadrant, okay? But having that five pi, yep, having that five pi over four does put me in the correct quadrant, okay? So definitely, definitely pay attention to that, right? Um, and remember what it does, you move out along the x-axis when you get to rho, and then theta tells you how to move in this direction, and then rho is gonna tell you how, what angle to rotate upward or what angle to rotate downward, okay? So, but that's it for um, number 11. So let's go on to number 12. That was a good one actually to cover because who would have thought of that, right? <laughs> um, so now you have an example of when that occurs and how it occurs. Okay, so now we have this equation and they want us to write it in spherical coordinates. Um, so then if we're trying to write that in spherical coordinates, what we need to do is we need to first convert um, y. And I think on the notes, if I scroll over here, I think it's this one. They do give me the coordinates here. They tell me x is equal to this, y is equal to this, and z is equal to that. So like, I'm going to use that, though, that information, and I'm going to say y is equal to rho sine of phi, sine of theta equal to five. And then normally what we do when we convert um, is we really try to solve for rho. Rho is kind of like the r, the radius. And so I'm gonna divide both sides by sine phi and sine theta. 
And then keep in mind that that can be written as five times one over sine phi times one over sine theta, which can be written as cosecant of phi and cosecant of theta. And so let's try to type that in there. And I'm definitely gonna need all my Greek letters. So rho equal to five trig cosecant Greek um, phi, get out of the parentheses, trig cosecant Greek theta. So that looks like what I have on my paper. Let's try it out. Okay, so now we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 9z equal to zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is I notice that over here, um, remember, rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So I know all of that is just rho squared. But z is equal to rho cosine of phi. Yes. I want to make sure that was not theta. <laughs> okay, so if that's the case, then I'm going to have rho squared minus nine rho cosine of phi equal to zero. If I factor out the rho, I end up with this expression. And if I set rho equal to zero and rho minus nine cosine of phi equal to zero, remember rho equal to zero means like the radius is equal to zero. So it's a point, okay? So that's definitely not gonna give us the image of this, okay? So we're gonna take this one, I'm just gonna add the nine cosine phi to the other side. And so what is my equation gonna look like? It's gonna look like rho equal to nine cosine of phi. And let's check it. Okay, and then now we get to um, number 14. So in number 14, it says they want, we have rho equal to eight, and they want us to convert it to rectangular coordinates. So we know that rho, rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So let's square both sides. We get rho squared equal to 64. And then that's x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 64, which is a uh, sphere with radius equal to eight, right? So then let's look here. That is a sphere, but it's with radius of like five point something, okay? Um, this sphere has a radius of eight. So it's gonna be this one. And that's not a sphere at all. And let's write the equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 60, oops, 64. And let's check this one. Yep, check, and there's my check as well. Okay, um, this one I leave to you guys because of course you need to watch the video to be able to answer that question. And then same thing here, make sure you watch that video and then you can um, answer the question. But other than that, we are done with 11.6. I'll stop the video here and I'll continue with 11.7 in a little bit.